Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech here. In today's video, we are going to be sharing 50 plus tips, tricks, features, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A72. So let's dive in and get started right away. Now, if you actually own one of these devices, you want to make sure that you want to squeeze out the maximum benefit of your ownership. Or if you're in the market to buy one of these guys, this is the video to watch to learn as much as possible about this device. So let's dive in. Now, the very first thing you want to do with your Samsung Galaxy A72 is you want to go to your settings, okay? And then you want to go all the way down and you want to go into about phone and you want to make sure you tap on edit and you change the name of your phone to something more personal. So I can say Saki 72. I want to know that that's the phone. Now it says right here, this name will be shown on other devices when your phone is available to connect using Bluetooth, Wi-Fi Direct, and other methods. So not only you're customizing it, you're also getting additional benefits, okay? It's gonna be easy to recognize. Let's move on. Now tip number two real quick is you wanna go into your advanced features, okay? Go to settings and go to advanced features, all right? And what you wanna do is you wanna tap on motions and gestures, and you wanna make sure certain things here are enabled uh, lift to wake, double tap to turn on screen, and double tap to turn off screen. Now, let me show you what that does real quick. So basically, if I double tap, it turns off the screen. If, or if I double tap, it's going to wake up the screen, and I, I'm able to log in from here. Uh, let me go back to that setting right here. So make sure these are enabled, and lift to wake is also pretty cool. So if you have this enabled, and your phone is just sitting on the table, just like this, all you do is you just you pick up the phone, and it's gonna turn on. So that's gonna be lift away so you can quickly glance at the phone, all right? So that's one more thing you're gonna do. And another cool thing here under the same uh, advanced features setting under motions and gestures is this option right here, mute with gestures. So basically what you can do is by using a bunch of cool gestures, you can mute incoming calls or silence alarms. So the first way to do it is if somebody's calling you, you don't want to take the call and you want to mute the call. All you do is you grab your phone and you put it on the table just like this and that's going to actually mute the call. The same gesture also silences alarms. So here's a quick example. I'm going to run a timer and it's going to start to uh, scream at me. So look at what I'm going to do. So two, three, one, the timer is going to go off. So with the gestures, I put it on the table and it actually mutes that notification. So it works with calls alarms, timers, whatever you want. Fantastic, let's move on. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is when I pull my uh, finger down on the screen like this, it takes me into the app drawer, okay? Now the funny thing is when I pull my finger up, it also takes me to the app drawer. So that becomes a redundant feature right there. What you can do is you can pinch the screen, go to the settings, and then from here, you can say swipe down for notification panel, so if I enable this one, let me just swipe here to a clean screen. And if I now pull it down, it's gonna bring down the notifications panel instead of going to the app drawer. And if I want to go to the app drawer, I can just simply swipe up. Additionally, you can pinch the screen, go to the settings, and you can show the apps screen button on your home screen. So if I enable that, now what I have is at the bottom corner, you're gonna see we have an app button. So if I click on this, it goes straight into the app drawer without even having me uh, swiping up. So if you like tactile buttons, you tap on it, it takes you inside, that's the way to get it done. Now this is a Samsung Galaxy A72, so we do have a high refresh rate display. So if you go to your settings, okay, and if I go into my display, you're gonna see that over here we have the motion smoothness option. You go inside and you can pick between 60 hertz or 90 hertz that's gonna give you smoother animations, but your battery life might take a small hit. So the high refresh rate is the way you wanna go. Now, if you wanna save a little bit more battery, you don't care about the high refresh rate, that's also an option. Uh, some people don't see a big difference between 60 or 90 or 120. Then you can go with the standard refresh rate and also get slightly longer battery life. Now, I prefer high, so I'm gonna keep it at that, all right? And another thing that's very important when you buy this phone is uh, if you are into reading on your phone, you wanna make sure you have Eye Comfort Shield uh, enabled, especially when you start to read books. 
uh, or newspapers or whatever online. When you do this, it is going to give you a tint on the screen that is going to make the colors less irritable to your eyes. All right, so this is a great feature if you're reading. Now, when you go inside here, if you enable this, you can do adaptive, you can do custom, you can change this the way you want, the color temperature. So that's, that's gonna be very easy on the eyes. That's gonna be a little bit more harder on the eyes, for example, but everybody has different eyes, so it's gonna be based on your needs. And you can also set a schedule, so you can have something like this uh, turn on from sunset to sunrise. Again, when the ambient light keeps going down, the bright screen can be bad for your eyes. So if you have it uh, to automatic, as you can see, or a custom, you can actually protect your eyes from getting too much strained by staring at the screen all the time. So make sure you manage that as well, all right? And then the other thing I wanna make sure that you understand is, now this phone is a great multimedia phone. To get the best out of watching movies and also listening to music, Here's a couple things you wanna tweak. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna go back into your settings and go into sounds and vibration. Once you're over there, you wanna go down and you wanna to go to sound quality and effects. And as you can see, we actually have Dolby Atmos, we have stereo speakers. You wanna enable this to get the best sound quality if you're using the built-in speakers and also enable this option. So if you're gaming, you also get the best sound quality. Now, if I tap on this one, I can do this manually if I want to, or I can just choose auto, so the phone will pick it for you. Additionally, you can disable this to save some battery life for general purposes, but if you're specifically watching a movie, uh, what you can do is you can pull the notifications panel down, and it's gonna be right here. So let me just find Dolby Atmos. If you don't find it here, you click on plus and it's gonna be somewhere in here. Okay, so let's see. There we have it. So you can drag and drop, enable this, and basically you can just toggle it on and off right from here. Even click on the text to get the detailed options, okay? You can get the detailed options from the control panel if you tap on the actual text portion. That actually is funny because you can do that with any of these guys, as you can see. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And of course, make sure that you enable dark mode uh, so the phone actually saves you uh, some battery. This is an OLED screen. So when you have the dark mode, uh, the blacks are more pronounced. And when you use more blacks on an OLED display, you get to save a little bit more battery. Now for this video, I'm gonna to stick to regular mode. Now let's move on and talk about the next tactic. Now one thing you need to understand with the camera is when I launch the camera, if, if I'm in the normal photo mode, there's a very important setting here that you guys need to be aware of, and that's this button on the top right here. Uh, tap on it, and you know that the phone has a 64 megapixel camera for high resolution photos. To use that 64 megapixels, you have to tap this, and you have to actually select 64 megapixels to get the maximum quality when you take a photo, all right? Uh, if, you, if you don't do that, if you just go by regular three by four, which is default, you're not getting the maximum resolution. You're still getting a great photo, but it's not the max. If you want the max, boom, boom, all right? Make sure you do that. The same thing applies to video. If you go to video, you tap over here and you can choose your different resolutions from the top. So that's 4K at 30 frames per second if that's what you wanna use. So just make sure you know what you're doing when you're in that camera mode. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the lock screen. So let me just double tap to turn off the screen, double tap to go inside. You can always tap the clock, that's gonna expand it and give you your face widgets, okay? Now these are in fact customizable. You can control your music, see your next alarm, see your, um, Schedule if that's what you want. So let's uh, show you how to get that done. So go inside, go to settings, go into the lock screen, and then go into the widgets right here. From here, you can enable all the options, okay? And also, if you tap on reorder, you can reorganize what you wanna see on the top or the bottom. Now let's uh, go back outside here. Now that we have changed it, let me just show it to you real quick. Okay, now when I click on it, it's gonna expand and it's gonna give me all these extra options as you can see. So again, fully customizable, highly useful widgets right at your lock screen, all right? 
let's go back inside now the next thing that's really cool is if you go to your settings okay and if i go into your if you go into your lock screen right over here uh, there's a bunch of things you can modify on the lock screen my favorite actually happens to be something very simple is this one right here contact information so basically i use this to simply create a signature on my lock screen whatever you put in here it's going to show up on the lock screen under the clock as you can see it says Saki Tech under the date so that just gives it a little bit more personalization you can put a quote your name whatever you want another big thing with the lock screen is if I double tap to lock the screen and tap the screen once what's going to appear is the always on display it appears for 15 seconds then it disappears okay that's the way I like it but you can go to your settings all right you can go into the display and you can always go into the always on display which should be actually no it's under lock screen so you go to lock screen and you go into your always on display right now I have it at tap to show for 10 seconds you can also do show always that's gonna kill your battery but anytime you turn off your screen at all times you're gonna see an always on display additionally you can go let me go inside and you can change the style of that so you tap on clock style and you can pick from all these various clock styles you can even go over here and add something from the gallery maybe a photo or uh, something like this okay so if I click done double tap to turn off look at what's gonna appear right there a little burn with some animation very light because it's trying to save battery but it's there so that's the always on display which also brings me, if I go back here under lock screen, if I tap on clock style, I can actually change the lock screen clock style. So if I tap on this one, I can pick from these various different clocks. I can change the color, as you can see, uh, to whatever that I want. That can be black, all right? So we have a bunch of different clock styles over here with different colors you can pick. You click done, you go into the lock screen, and you'll see the new clock appear right there fantastic nice customization now one cool thing when it comes to notifications is you can always go to the settings and then you want to go to notifications and you want to make sure you have the brief enabled if you go to detailed you lose some options with brief you can access the edge lighting option so you go to into brief pop-up settings and then you can choose the edge lighting style so if I tap on this one when I get a notification, I can have all these cool effects, as you can see, okay? Spotlight or whatever, color. Let's change the color. Look at that. You have this nice effect on the side. Let's uh, pick yellow. Let's go and make it even uh, thicker and make it sh uh, long. And let's make it low transparency. Uh, let's uh, look at that. So we have all these various options. Not as advanced as some of the other smartphones like, like the like the flagships with the curved displays but you still get a little bit so that's echo you can see you have edge lighting right here which is crazy and you got fireworks as you can see on the top okay so you get these options only if you enable brief notification pop-up style now one more thing you can do is if i go up here what i can do is i can hide applications so you go to your app drawer you tap on over here you go into settings and you tap on hide applications so you pick the apps you want to hide. So calculator, calendar, I click done. Now when I go outside, those apps are in fact hidden, okay? If I want to see them, what I would do is I would have to unhide them. Go back to settings, tap on hide, and unhide the app that you want to see. Now the calculator is going to be back there, but the other one, the calendar, is still hidden. So that's an option for you guys if you just want to uh, hide some apps now one thing that's really cool is when you want to modify your home screen let's go over here and let's just use these applications as an example we have a folder here you can change the color of that folder okay so you can modify the color to anything that you want as you can see that's great uh, let's say you want to create a folder out of these five applications you don't have to just drag and drop each one of them all you do is press and hold tap on select and then select all the ones that you want to use and what you can do is you can perform batch operations I can uninstall remove or create a folder then give it a name let me just say X and then pick a color okay and let's just say blue done boom boom and there we go okay so 
very easy to create folders and also very easy to move applications around. Look at this. Press and hold, tap on select, select all these guys, press and hold again. All of them are bundled in your finger. You go outside, you can drop it anywhere that you want. Look at that. Very easy to move applications, multiple applications from screen to screen, okay? So use that to enhance and quicken your customization. Now we do have a side button here that is also customizable. So let's go to settings. Let's go into advanced features right over here. And let's go to side key. That's known as the side key, volume rocker, side key. That's not the power button. So when you double press, what you can do right now, if I double press, it launches the camera. Let me show it to you. The camera comes right up. Now, what if I want to open Bixby? I can do that as well. Or I can open any app that I want. So let's just do calculator. Now, when I double tap this button, the side key, boom, we got the calculator, all right? That's fantastic. Now, if you press and hold, you can either wake up Bixby or you can play with the power off menu. So press and hold. And you can use the power menu from here. And of course, if you just press it, it just turns off the screen. That's not a big deal. Uh, but you can customize the side key to fit your needs. Another big thing is if you want to fit more applications onto your screen, all you do is you right now, take a look at that. I have one, two, three, four. So I have four columns, okay? So if I pinch the screen and if I go to my settings, on the top, I can change the home screen grid. So I can go all the way up to five by six. That's going to allow me to have five columns and six rows so I can uh, insert maximum amount of apps. Now, if you want to see less applications, you can go all the way down to four by five. So we have four columns and five rows, okay? Uh, that's the modification you can make on the home screen. It's gonna be up to you. You can do the same thing with the apps. So with this one, let's go for five by six. I can fit as many apps as I want in the app drawer. I tap this button. I just say clean up pages, and then it's going to arrange, fill up all the pages as you can see. So now I have one app screen. All the apps are right here. The more I add, the more pages are gonna be added. So that's great as well. Now with your fingerprints, there's one thing you wanna do. If you add multiple fingerprints, you wanna be able to differentiate between your fingerprints. So when you go in to manage them under biometrics and security, uh, go into fingerprints. Let me just put in the passcode here. Uh, what you can do is you can check added fingerprints. So let's say I tap on this one and I put my finger here. It's gonna say that's fingerprint number one. Now I can tap on this guy and change it to left index. Now that's going to be much more recognizable when I come and manage these. But again, if I tap now, look, it says LI. So I know this finger is for that text right there. And as you add multiple fingers, that's you want, that's what, how you can customize it. Now, while you are in biometrics and security, just make sure you enable find my mobile. I'm not going to do it right now because it takes a couple extra minutes here. You have to log into your Samsung account. But basically, when you have this thing enabled, when you enable this, after you set this up, which is very easy to do, all you do is you go to, let's say you lose your phone. You go to findmymobile.samsung.com that allows you to track your phone to its exact location in case it's lost or stolen as long as the phone is on. So make sure you set up Find My Mobile, log in with your Samsung account, and you are going to be good to go. Then you go to that website, log in with the same Samsung account that you used to log in here, and it gives you full tracking capabilities and additional features. All right. Now, this phone is pretty well-sized. It does have a 6.5-inch display, so if your finger is a little bit smaller, what you can do is you can go to your settings, you can go to advanced features, and then you can go to one-handed mode. Just enable this. You go inside. You can use gesture or button activation. I'm just going to do button activation, and look at what happens. If I double tap, it makes the screen smaller. I can left justify this. Let's uh, move it over. And I can use the whole phone with one hand, no problem. And I can also resize it and move it around. So look at that. Such a customizable one-handed mode. Let me just resize it. So this will be much more easily manageable with one hand if I so desire, okay? When you're done, you tap anywhere here, it goes back in business maximum mode. 
All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned some great stuff about your Samsung Galaxy A52. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.